So very good afternoon to all participants, those who have joined this uh, cloud meeting. Uh, I welcome you all to this uh, second day of this NEPA orientation and sensitization course being organized by Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Maratwada University, Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar. Uh, friends, uh, as uh, in the first day itself, it was told that uh, 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 as it was told on the first day itself that uh, you have to upload your uh, nomination letter, you have to upload your I card, and you have to upload your photo. Uh, and yesterday was the last day, and you can see that many participants, they are still struggling to upload uh, that thing. It is a UGC portal, even if you are regularly here, uh, but you haven't uploaded all those things. Uh, your absentee will be there. Kindly take a note of it. Your absentee will be there for that particular thing. So many participants uh, still uh, haven't uploaded uh, their documents. Uh, just I will share the screen so that uh, all of you can get acquainted with uh, how many participants have shared Amul, my screen is visible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So you see here that uh, I will minimize this thing also. Look here, uh, CG Lomte, Govind Kashinath, Vidya Deshmukh, then uh, many participants, Shweta Srivastav, Shegde, uh, Sir Sonali Ashok, Santosh Sir, Ardukar Sarika, Ma'am, then Potangale, Mange, uh, then again we have Pawar, Gaurav Ashok, Many participants uh, still haven't uploaded. You see that Ajay, Raghunath, then uh, Sanjay Kumar sir, Dr. Kamde, then Ananda Vasant sir. So least goes on. And what is happening friends that uh, after this course is over and when the participant gets uh, free time from his daily schedule, he uploads the documents after two months and he asks for the certificate. So may I'm making it very, very clear to you that if you fail to upload the documents, it was speculated time was given of yesterday, but still, if you have failed to upload the documents, the doing class, giving the exam will be nothing. You will not get the certificates. You see that uh, 200 registrations are there. And when it comes to uh, logging in, only logging in, only 96 participants have logged in. Again, these remaining participants will be the first people to call me after uh, the course is over to get the certificates. So be sincere, be uh, in the time bond, kindly upload all the documents. It is my humble request to all of you. What we have experienced in the past of three to four courses Participants, after uh, completing the course, when they get free time, when they get, they are free, when they are totally free, they will upload after two months, three months, and then they will tell that, I'm just certificate. Our certificate kyun aaya. So it is really a discouraging thing for the MMTTC that uh, participants are uploading the documents after the course is over, after one and two months, and asking for the certificates. We will be very clear. We will be very clear. We will issue the least of the participants, those who have uploaded or just ne upload ni kiya hai. Uh, agar, uh, Vidya ma'am, agar uh, aap unable ho rahe hai uploading ke liye, take a person from computer with you uh, who is well acquainted with all these websites. Uh, then and only you can get, I know that uh, the website is tough to upload, but still you can take it, uh, anyone from the computer science subject with you. So kindly take a note of it that no admission will be there of the person those who haven't uploaded. Admission will be cancelled and attendance will be taken on the 
starting of the lecture and the end of the lecture at the end of the lecture also the uh, attendance will be there kindly take a note of it Yes, roll number 127, any question? Roll number 16, any question? Yes, sir. I received my roll number like a 16, but right now I saw that in that uploaded document, that number is 17. No, no, no. That is something different and this is different. Okay, okay. No problem. Sir. No problem. Haan, yes. You have to upload it. If you upload it, you have to upload it. 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 Unka admission hum log cancel kar denge because we can't wait. Okay. And we, we, we are not that much free. Continuously, every month, two courses of NEP are there. So we are not free. It is for each everyone, not for roll number 16, that you have to upload your documents on time. I have al already. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, any questions? Whatever, sir, you can unmute. Uh, sir, I have document upload kiye. Uh, yes. 32 uh, roll number, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. sir hello, sir. Yes, sir. Atul ji, tell me. Sir, I had a little bit of a week here, so I didn't know how many types of documents were uploaded and where were they uploaded? You're telling me, sir. Today, not. Yesterday, you were not. Yesterday, you were not. Yesterday, you were not. Yesterday, हाँ प्रेजेंट था सर मैं इंडक्शन मीटिंग में आप नहीं थे हाँ प्रेजेंट थे सर नहीं इंडक्शन मीटिंग में आप थे या नहीं थे इंडक्शन मीटिंग में नहीं था सर हाँ इंडक्शन मीटिंग में नहीं थे इंडक्शन मीटिंग में सभी चीजें कल भी बताया हूँ मैंने सर कि आपको अपलोड करना है नॉमिनेशन लेटर उसके बाद में आपका आई कार्ड और फोटो ओके थ
अमोल काइंडली मेक मैम को होस्ट मुग्धा देश पांडे अमोल वदन यू आर देर यस सर आई एम ऑलरेडी मुग्धा देश पांडे मैम आप से ज्वाइन है यस सर मैंने बना दिया सर ओके ओके थैंक यू अमोल सो आई वेलकम our today's resource person uh desh pande ma'am so just i will brief out her bio data uh, professor dr uh, M- uh, madhuri sunil desh pande ma'am uh her education qualification is mba phd in management such in commerce diploma in uh it msc it uh she has a vast teaching and research experience she has been the acting pro vice chancellor of uh, swami ramnand tirth marathwada university in nanded uh also professor and director in head department of management science school of commerce and management of uh, srtm university in nanded uh has a vast teaching and research experience of more than 26 years under her able guidance uh, six management students and uh, five commerce students have uh, awarded their phd in five students were awarded mphil 2 in management and 3 in commerce by srtm university nanded uh, she has uh, uh, also successfully completed one major and one minor research project and has guided 150 projects of mba uh, marketing projects and also uh, she has 45 research papers published and she has uh, uh, presented around 46 uh, research papers in various national and international uh conferences she has also delivered many lectures in orientation and refresher courses and also uh in corporate uh, uh, works in uh, the various universities so indeed it is really a pleasure and honor for all of us to have her here in this afternoon session so on behalf of ugc malviya mission teachers training center uh dr baba saheb ambedkar uh, marathwada university chhatrapati sambhaji nagar i welcome uh ma'am to this uh, afternoon session and i would now hand over the proceeding to her over to you ma'am uh, am i audible Yes, 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 ma'am. You are audible. Yes. Fine. Uh, before Madam starts the lecture, I would request all participants to put their roll numbers in the chat box. Sabi participants se nivedan hai ki apne roll number chat box me dalay aur amol sabi uh, attendance ko copy kar le. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. A hearty welcome to all the respectable teachers. Nice to connect uh, with you all. online for mep orientation and sensitization program which is organized by ugc malaviya mission teacher training center dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university chhatrapati sambhaji nagar thanks organizers uh, for offering me the chance to relook at mep 2020 review its highlights the major features rethink about that and share the reflections with you the teaching fraternity feeling delightful to do that since a long cherished dream education dream it come true in the form of nep 2020 friends education leads to economic and social progress well defined and futuristic education policy it is very much essential at college as well as at school level the national education policy nep 2020 which was approved by the union cabinet of india on 29th of july 2020 it outlines the vision of india's education system the new policy replaces the previous national policy on education npe 1986 nep 2020 that is a comprehensive kind of framework for elementary education to higher education as well as vocational training in both 
rural as well as urban India. First time in world history, education policy is framed based on more than 33 crore inputs received from people from all walks of life. This is very truly the first Swadeshi policy of independent Bharat almost after 185 years. Remember those glorious good old days before the enactment of Indian Education Act 1835 by British. Ancient India, ancient Bharatiya education system with more than 10,000 gurukuls working at their best. Names of stalwarts like Gargi, Maitreyi, Lopamudra, Aryabhat, Bhaskaracharya, Charak, Sushrut, Brahmagup, Chakrapani, Madho, Nagarjun, Panini, a number of names. You name any discipline, you name any area of human endeavor, any discipline, and you will find number of shining stars. You may be from astronomy, maybe from medicine, maybe from yoga, maybe from economics. You'll find that Bharat shining with a galaxy of pioneers, stal all stalwarts and all the scholars in literally many areas of the disciplines. In those good old days, scholars from all over the world, they used to visit our country so as to seek education. If they not, if they could not seek admission in Takshashila, Nalanda, uh, which were very much popular in those days, there were other gurukuls in the vicinity. They were not so popular, but they were resourceful enough so as to accommodate all the learners, so that no aspirant would remain disappointed. And no one would be going back without seeking education from our country. That was the status and versatility of our education system in those days. After enactment of Indian Education Act 1835, deterioration started. And in due course of time, there was end of Gurukul system in due course of time. The literacy percentage, which was almost full 100% in those good old days, fell back miserably, which, which came down very low at the time of independence. Let us bring back the glory. Let us be committed for proper execution of NEP 2020. Friends, we know the entire kind of uh, procedure through which we could get this NEP 2020 in our hands. Number of academicians, professionals, consultants, number of stalwarts, they worked very hard. They sought feedback from different corners of our country, from different sections of our population, from different stakeholders, and a result of which we could get this education dream in the form of NEP 2020. Now, we are, we teachers, basically we are having a major role for the sake of proper execution of NEP 2020. Now, no government, no administrators, no one would be making some kind of uh, interference. Nobody would be making any kind of effort on our own solely we teachers, we are responsible for the proper execution, for the efficient kind of implementation, for the effective kind of uh, implementation of this NEP 2020. As Swami Vivekananda said, arise, awake and stop not till the goal is achieved. Government literally has done a lot. Number of good initiatives, they were incorporated a 
and as a result of which we could get this effective kind of policy in the form of NEP 2020. In the meanwhile, in the corona period, if you remember, with an objective of getting a feedback from the teachers regarding what kind of problems they might face, what kind of challenges do they perceive regarding implementation of NEP 2020, a series of webinars, they were carried on by Niti Ayog in collaboration with number of NGOs, Bharatiya Shikshan Mandal was one amongst them. I was, again, very closely associated with the process. So I saw that number of teachers wholeheartedly, they used to attend the webinar, they used to take part in the deliberations, they used to talk about what kind of challenges they are perceiving what kind of solutions they were able to find out. And as a result of that, the, that uh, series of webinars, definitely uh, it, it has contributed uh, in a major way for the sake of implementation of NEP 2020. Government is keeping no stone unturned from making this NEP 2020 uh, a, being a grand success. Because as we understand, the glory of ancient Bharat, it was solely attributed for our education system. Our Gurukuls. Now, by the way, uh, at this moment also, a research is just carried on by Bharatiya Shikshan Mandal and several such kinds of uh, uh, academicians and stalwarts for the sake of reviving this Gurukul system and for the sake of getting uh, our ancient education system once again in proper flow so that whatever was the situation of our country long back, uh, definitely it could be revived. And once again, we would be just making ourselves very much eligible for being Vishwaguru. In ancient India, Gurus, Acharyas, they were built, they, they, they believed in developing individuals' body, mind, intellect, and the soul. Whenever it comes to education, it was not only concerned with sharing of knowledge. Nowadays, we are talking about K, S, and A's knowledge, skills, and attitude. So whenever we talk about learning objectives, whenever we talk about education, whenever we talk about the outcomes of the teaching learning process, definitely with that, we see to it that we are not only just making an effort so as to share knowledge, so as to impart knowledge. Along with that, what is important is while you are imparting knowledge, when you are sharing knowledge, when you are creating knowledge, Whenever you are processing knowledge, whenever you are dealing with such kind of knowledge sharing, equal importance, it has to be given uh, for the sake of developing consequent skills so that person, the learner would be very meaningfully would be seeking education. Now, let me again share with you how our ancient education system, it followed a holistic and multidisciplinary kind of approach towards education, even in those days. And thereafter, we'll see uh, definitely what kind of plans we are having in NEP 2020. And as a teacher, what kind of role do we have for the sake of appreciating different dimensions of this uh, education and accordingly in what manner we are required to contribute for the sake of develop, for the sake of uh, uh, just grooming the holistic development of the students. And from that angle, uh, I wish to put in front of you several such kinds of views and several such kinds of features definitely they were present 100% to the extent of 100% in our ancient education system. As I said just now, our gurus, our acharyas, they truly, they were working 
uh, in development through education system, through their gurukuls. They were working uh, for the sake of development of individuals, not only intellect, but individuals' mind also, individuals' body also, as well, the soul of the individual also. And with that, let us try to appreciate this case, a sharing of knowledge, then uh, developing some kind of uh, skills and making some kind of attitudinal changes uh, in the personality of a student and making some kind of behavioral modifications in the student so that the student would be uh, socially acceptable, the, so the student would be technically competent and capable so as to be a suitable member of the, so as to be a corporate citizen, so as to be uh, a law-abiding kind of citizen uh, in the form of a fully grown kind of individual. Now, we, we had great institutions like Takshashila, Nalanda, Kolabi, Vikram Shila. And with that, we tried to set the tradition of holistic education. These institutions of learning, they were world known. And as I made initially, scholars from all over the world, they were aware in, in absence of social media, uh, they were aware about uh, existence of such kinds of institutes of higher learning, what kind of uh, objectives they used to have, what kind of outcomes they used to produce. So there was a popularity, there was a perfect knowledge regarding all such kinds of aspects. And again, uh, again, number of references are there in the ancient Indian literature through that uh, you can appreciate uh, the quality of uh, Indian education system. Bhattas Kadambari. Uh, in case you refer Bhattas Kadambari, you will find that uh, you will find that good education is described by Bhattas as the knowledge of 64 kalas. All the 64 kalas or arts, they included not only arts, they included arts along with that. Some science aspects also, they were very much involved in the 64 arts. In addition to that, vocational, professional and soft skills, very much they were a part of good education uh, as contemplated by Banabhattas in the Kadambari. So again, let us bring back all such kinds of aspects so as to pursue different dimensions of education. Nowadays, we are calling it as holistic and multidisciplinary education. Education is not only for the sake of livelihood, for the sake of making the living. Because livelihood is only a part of life. It is not life. Education is life. Education makes you uh, ready so as to live life. So that kind of orientation, it was seen whenever you are going through some previous references. Nowadays, we are talking about global world. We are talking about global citizen. We are talking about uh, global, we, we are talking about world as a global village. But anyhow, this concept again, it is deeply rooted in Indian culture. Creation of this global citizen or Vishwamanav. That is not new for us Indians. Whereas we'll find that the concept of Vishwamanav, it is deeply rooted, as I said, in Indian culture. And with that, this Vishwamana is supposed to have a capacity of rational thought, compassion, empathy, courage, resilience, creative imagination, and above all, sound ethical moorings as well as character. Dear friends, nowadays we observe literacy percentage, consequently it is on an increase. Thanks to the initiatives of the government 
and thanks to the awareness of the society. We are having a continuously rising literacy percentage. But when we try to get a review regarding whatever is happening in the society, increase literacy percentage, does it get reflected somewhere in the form of good practices, in the form of reduced crime, reduced violence? Whatever practices we observe in the society, definitely good education, it has to be reflected, it has to be very much visible in that. On the contrary, what is being observed is, in case you go the, by the statistics, percentage of crime, violence, exploitation, maybe exploitation of women, other weaker sections of the society, you will find that the percentage is ever increasing. No decrease is observed. Then what we are doing? What is the meaning of education? What basically education is? Number of questions, they are being raised. Nowadays, we, are, we observe that women, they are not safe anywhere. At homes, in neighborhoods, in trains, in buses, in air, at schools, at ashram schools, at colleges, at offices. Are they safe? Are they secure? Can they be completely happy? Can they contribute completely for the sake of their work? No. Then why is it that we are boasting about educated kind of society? Why we are boasting about increasing literacy percentage? Something is missing very miserably in the society. Something is missing very miserably Maybe in education, maybe in our parenting, maybe at the family level. Number of questions they are being raised regarding what exactly is missing. Why is it that? There is a proliferation in the number of educational institutions, number of branches of education. Graduates, postgraduates, doctorates. Continuous increase is there in their percentages. But consequent result, consequent ramifications, they are not observed in any of the parameters as far as societal living is concerned, as far as civic sense is concerned, as far as change management is concerned. And again, from that view, once again, we are required to review regarding what basically is education, what is the meaning of education, what are the basic features of NEP 2020, what are the major highlights of it, and how with that, in case some, some something wrong is happening in the society, how many of us they stand against the wrong? How many of us take initiative for restricting such kind of wrong practices in the society. We feel that, oh, I'm safe. I'm not hampered by that. I'm not affected by that. So why should I worry? And we, we neglect such kind of practices. And in many cases, what we observe is something is going on in the society. Something wrong is happening. Then those who harass the criminals, they are very less in number. Spectators, they are in majority. In spite of that, we don't have the courage. We don't have the willingness. We never feel that. Many of us never feel that we should do something so as to stop such kind of wrong doings, wrong practices, and not so ethical kind of activities as such. And because of that, we are prompted once again to review, to relook at the situation and find out the meaning of education and decide in what manner we teachers 
we should contribute our best for the sake of betterment of our society. So whatever life skills we require for the sake of our lifelong development, are we acquiring those? So there is a big question. Whatever capability, whatever competence is required, to what extent we are working on that? We are taking care of syllabus completion. We are taking care of exam results. But are we equally careful? Are we equally sensitive and responsive for the sake of different dimensions of the personality? Do we take the responsibility of whatever happens to the student after graduating? Maybe in the form of getting employment, maybe in the form of success, maybe in the form of happiness, maybe in the form of status. Are we paying attention to all such kinds of activities? Or are we bothered only about our pay skills, our workload, our salaries, the incentives, professional development, personal development? So, in the light of NEP 2020, friends, there is a need to pay attention to all such kinds of questions, to all such kinds of issues, to and various kinds of challenges as such. Now, our country, it has formally accepted, it has formally adopted holistic education through NEP 2020. And it is looking after both the livelihood as well as the life. We understand, we must understand that livelihood is only a part of life and it is not whole of it. And through that, we must appreciate the meaning, the value of education and accordingly, we should try our best, we should give our 100% so as to educate all the learners who are with us. Uh, Role number 154 has raised the hand by mistake or want to ask something or want to contribute something. Role number 154. I hope I am reaching you properly. Okay, he roll number one fifty four said that PPT is uh, PPT is static. Very true. Until now, I have not started working on the PPT. I wish to give you the background. And it's only after finishing the background, uh, we'll just uh, pay attention to the PPT. Are you with me? Are you comfortable? Okay. Fine. Again, let me continue. And as and when... Uh, as I have planned, I'll be opening the PPT and again, different bullets and different points I will be sharing with you. Well, there are different aspects of holistic education, like fitness, like good health, like sound ethical grounding, psychosocial well-being. So definitely, all the different aspects of the personality which develop the capacities and which promote the student wellness, definitely they are a part of the holistic education. The purpose of holistic education that is to develop 
a highly capable, socially acceptable, skilled as well as enterprising youth who would be assuming leadership in various peers. So as to he or she would be ready to face national as well as global challenges and that too with dedication to human values and definitely the education has to be rooted in the Indian culture as well as Indian tradition. So basically this NEP 2020 that is a truly Swadeshi, true Swadeshi policy of independent India. And with that, we are required to appreciate whatever we have been doing over the years. What is the, basically the crux of ancient Indian education system? And with that, let us try to appreciate the meaning of holistic education. And with that, definitely we'll be working on different aspects of NEP 2020 and see to it that will be giving justice for NEP 2020 in a proper manner. NEP, again, NEP 2020, that is the first education policy of this 21st century. Before, near about 34 years, we adopted NPE 1986 National Policy on Education in the year 1986. Now this NEP 2020 that is based on the pillars of access, equity, quality, affordability as well as accountability. This NEP 2020, it is basically aligned to 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. You must be aware about the Agenda for Sustainable Development for uh, 2030 and definitely NEP 2020 perfectly it is aligned in the light of that. The aim of NEP 2020 basically that is to transform our country into a vibrant knowledge society. We wish to create a vibrant knowledge society and we, we, we want to become a global knowledge superpower. How, how is it possible to be a global knowledge superpower? By making our school education, by making our college education more holistic, more flexible, more multidisciplinary and definitely perfectly being suited for the needs of 21st century. And definitely what is important is we should aim at bringing out unique capabilities of each student. One-to-one -one kind of interaction, one-to-one -one kind of uh, some kind of association definitely uh, it has to be targeted because each student is unique. Needs of each students, they are different. So accordingly, we teachers, we must make our efforts in such a manner that definitely every student would be getting some kind of chance and opportunity so that complete potential, it would be explored. And accordingly, everyone understands what is good for me how I would be happy, how I would be successful. So that is basically the intention of this NEP 2020. As per NEP 2020, holistic and multidisciplinary education, it would aim to develop all capacities of the human being. What kind of capacities at what levels? Intellectual, aesthetic, social, physical, emotional, as well as moral in an integrated kind of manner. That is the meaning of holistic. It is an integration, it, it is an integrated kind of approach. It is a holistic kind of approach in which proper attention would be paid for proper all the capacities of the human beings. It would not be only intellectual. 
it would be aesthetic also it would be social also it would be paying attention for the physical uh, kind of uh, requirements also as well as emotional needs also and along with that moral aspects also they would not be neglected that is what holistic education is and such kind of holistic education definitely it would be developing well rounded individuals which would be possessing the skills which are required for winning in this 21st century in various fields maybe arts maybe humanities maybe languages maybe sciences maybe social sciences professional technical as well as vocational kind of disciplines in all such kinds of disciplines definitely such kind of holistic education it would be uh, playing the role i read somewhere I, i i don't remember the name but i read somewhere in the news that a physicist by education a botanist by profession won nobel prize for the work for his work in chemistry domain i was so amazed i was so stunned to listen, to read that unfortunately i forgot the name in case you remember you can uh, write the name in the chat box once again i repeat what i said i read somewhere that a botany a physicist by education and a botanist by profession won nobel prize for his work in the area of chemistry this is what holistic education is students interest students aptitude students attitude definitely it has to be respected and should it be, should receive the proper focus as as well as proper opportunity to be familiar with various disciplines various human disciplines as such a student should be able to decide and pursue what i want it may be music it may be dance it may be technology it may be sociology it may be economics or it may be anthropology for that matter there are there, there is no need for having a separation between arts and science no need to make distinction between curricular activities and extra curricular activities nothing like that whatever you learn whatever you face whatever you experience definitely it contributes for your life it contributes for your personality development so no reason to distinguish between arts and science no reason to distinguish between curricular activities extra curricular activities co curricular activities as such no reason to differentiate between vocational activities and academic activities as such basically what is important is integration and unification of knowledge whatever hierarchies are there which separate different bits of knowledge from each other several developmental initiatives from each other definitely all such kinds of harmful hierarchies they should be eliminated we should be away from that so what is important is conceptual understanding rote learning learning for examination it has to be avoided what is important is clarity of concepts whatever is important is understand understanding and comprehending the concept by giving proper examples by giving proper applications in the day to day life creativity critical thinking it has to be encouraged logical thinking lateral thinking innovative kind of approach it has to be encouraged whenever we speak about any concept whenever we speak about any practice we should we must see that it is addressing all the aspects which i am trying to share with you like logical decision making 
क्रिटिकल थिंकिंग लैटरल थिंकिंग पॉजिटिविटी क्रिएटिविटी इनोवेशन एथिकल गाइडलाइंस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल वैल्यूज मोरल वैल्यूज दे शुड बी एड्रेस फ्रॉम ऑल पॉसिबल वेज वेन एवर यू टॉक अबाउट एन इश्यू अगेन सो एज टू क्लैरिफाई द थिंग्स लेट मी शेयर अगेन वन एग्जाम्पल which i read somewhere uh, regarding our gurukul system regarding our gurukul system i heard from someone that in our gurukuls there was no syllabus there was no time table there was no demarcation in between different subject history different biology different science different geography different civics different nothing like that one example i would like share uh, to share with you regarding our gurukul kind of learning a teacher is taking the students in the fields in the field, connect with the nature some kind of change coming beyond the four walls of the classroom and try to enjoy the on on similar light uh, similar lines with shanti niketan by gurudev ravindranath tagore coming out of the four walls of the classroom under the open sky try to appreciate how wheat is bored how it is cultivated where the seeds are available how to nurture the cultivation process how much water how much water is required how to water the plants over watering or under watering how it is to be identified how much sunlight is required what kind of quality of soil that is required for growing wheat what kind of nutrients are required for wheat how much time is required when you bore the seeds and when the final crop is ready for harvesting how much time is required what are the different stages in that where the seeds are available after harvesting which market is to be explored how to reach there what about distribution what about inventory storing what about material handling what about economics what about financial management how to market how many people they would be required how to price the product the finished product what kind of climate is required for good growth of the crop which different types of markets they are available for raw material as well as finished product wheat is the finished product what if you are growing wheat in excess in abundance more than your requirements how to store it what about the processing on the finished product what kind of industries what kind of machineries they are required for that i mean number of disciplines number of different dimensions whenever you are visiting a farm at the simultaneously you are trying to address botany physiology zoology also economics agriculture marketing management different dimensions again you are trying to touch this is how holistic education in an integrated in an interesting kind of manner it has to be conveyed without any barrier
without any compartmentalization of this subject and that subject, this class and that class. Hmm? At our own level, we can make various efforts so as to do that. As a teacher, I experimented with many such kinds of activities and many such kinds of initiatives. Now, what is the benefit of all such kinds of activities? Whenever in an innovative kind of manner, whenever you are trying to approach the students, whenever you are trying to give them a new view, whenever you are just making them think in a, with a different perspective, whenever you are putting in front of them different dimensions of the issue, like this is your form. Maybe there is a boundary and there is another form by another farmer. What about the possibility of collaboration with each other? Storage, warehouse. How, how about the concept of sharing the warehouse by both of you? Developing clusters, developing a common facility center, developing some kind of processing kind of activities. Number of different dimensions are there with that. Whenever you are trying to connect with your students, whenever you are trying to enlighten them, this is what holistic and multidisciplinary education is. What are the benefits of such kinds of holistic as well as multidisciplinary kind of dimensions? Such as students, they become empowered so as to improve the educational outcome. And in the meanwhile, while learning, they develop life skills which are necessary for their personal lives as well as professional lives. Even such kind of student in case he or she is learning in this manner. No need for them to seek for a salaried kind of job. On their own, they can find out own opportunity to learn. Because now they know how to, how to cultivate the crops. So definitely on their own, they are able to earn their bread. In case they are interested in further processing, definitely they can go for making an industry. In case while dealing with all such kinds of things, they become more interested in soil and its related dynamics. They become more interested in such kind of issues. Definitely they can explore various disciplines, maybe like geology, like maybe agriculture, agronomy. So when they are working on all such kinds of issues, definitely they will understand what basically is my innate liking, what basically I'm interested in. So this is how their personal life also gets benefited as well as they professionally also they grow and they become confident that I know a lot. I know number of aspects, all the value chain right from bowing the seed unless the final crop is ready for sale in the market until that the entire steps of the value chain, they are completely familiar. In case they are interested in further activities, making wheat flour, in case they are interested in developing such kinds of wheat flour uh, products, definitely with that. Their teachers, in case they are making them familiar with all such kinds of activities. In their early childhood, they would be tapping their own capability. They would be exploring their own uh, interest. And they would be making some kind of dream about their future. They would be making career plans. They would be just thinking about their future uh, how it would be like you know, making a shape like that. So this is how uh, their mental, enhanced mental well-being, their confidence, their self-awareness, their sense of social responsibility, uh, how different aspects they are connected with each other. So that kind of learning, it would be taking place uh, with such kinds of holistic approach. How different 
steps of the process they are connected with each other how different people how different professionals they would be connected with each other physically emotionally uh, so th that that would be a great learning uh, then again psychologically negative emotions negative feelings there is a minimum possibility of meeting with such kinds of negative emotions as such whenever you are connected with others whenever you are confident whenever you are aware whenever you are having a high level of self esteem because of this conf confidence because of this exposure with the outside world definitely with that there is a reduced psychological impact even if there is violence even if there is some kind of abuse or even if they are facing some kind of inequality in their lives so definitely a holistic education it talks about the role of the environment how to live with the nature how to develop coexistence with the uh, different societal members how to become eco friendly how to develop eco friendly kind of activities and procedures so all such kinds of aspects they are being learned out of this holistic and multidisciplinary kind of education who am i what is my role in the society what is my environment what are the different elements of the environment how i am connected with that how i should respect the other elements in the society how i should respect the other components of my environment in case i do something what would be the impact on the nature consider just remember mumbai flood and you will find that mumbai flood it was extremely man made kind of disaster number of rivers were there seven rivers were there in mumbai because of building building builders lobby and number of construction they were just being going on because of that the natural path of these rivers it was completely being blocked interference with the nature hmm? disturbing the nature that kind of activity took place then unlimited use of polythene bags then not respecting the sanitation and various kinds of sewage and all such kinds of activities and because of that mumbai flood it was invited by human beings on their own global warming everyone amongst us is contributing for the global warming whenever you are going to a school getting a degree maybe of any discipline you are getting a post graduate degree also you are doing your phd also are you in a position to develop a suitable strategy so that everyone in the society would be contributing in an eco friendly manner definitely not we are not doing we have not been doing that i i mean many of us they are not doing that majority of us they are not doing that and at such point in time importance of holistic and multidisciplinary education is to be appreciated only when at schooling at homes through our parenting every kid gets an understanding of this kind right from the beginning of their interaction with the outside world then only will be making a world a better place to live otherwise number of insults we are making to the society to the environment and on our own we are digging on our own we are inviting dangers and various disasters and at this level this holistic education respecting the environment respecting the society respecting the family all such kinds of dimensions they become more and more prevalent
interconnectedness, interrelatedness. Definitely, it has to be conveyed to the public. It has to be conveyed to the students at large. Self-responsibility, accountability, it has to be imbibed among the students. Get an example of traffic jam. Whenever there is traffic jam, everyone wants to move forward. Four wheelers, in case they are struck up, two wheelers, again, they, they, they make the effort so as to find a way and to go ahead. And in the meanwhile, they see they cannot see that again they are added to the traffic congestion. So that kind of learning never it was possible for majority of the students through parenting, through schooling, through education, and because of that, number of wrong things we are observing. So such kind of curricular structure we are required to develop, which would be making every student, every learner aware about such kinds of interrelatedness, interdependencies, interconnectedness with family, with society, with the community, with the economy, as well as with the nation as such. Some kind of flexibility is required in curriculum, some novel as well as engaging course options. They are required to be made available to the students. They should be given some areas of their interest, some subjects of their interest, some courses of their interest at the same time. While they would be getting specialization, they should not be very much aloof and apart from other areas of knowledge. We are exactly doing the same. We are going towards specialization, super specialization, super super specialization. And whenever we are going towards super specialization, we are getting very much apart from the other knowledge domains. Disintegration of knowledge that is taking place, which is very much hazardous, which is very much harmful. And a special care is taken in this NEP 2020 so as to avoid that. And because of that, flexibility, that is a major feature of NEP 2020. Imaginative as well as flexible curricular structure Definitely, it is the need of the hour. It would be making students eligible to make a creative combination of various disciplines of study so that rigid boundaries, they would be avoided. And with that, we would be contributing for the betterment of the quality of living. Nowadays, we are talking about credit-based courses and credit-based projects in the areas of community engagement, in the areas of social service, as well as environment. Just now, I talk about environmental education, the importance and the significance of that. Waste management, pollution, sanitation, climate change, biodiversity, forest life, wildlife conservation, number of issues are there. So students, they should be offered areas of their choice so that all such kinds of areas, they would be addressed and accordingly, we would be able to give our best for the sake of making this place very much happy and enjoyable kind of life regarding that. Value-based education, that is again another part of that. I just now I talk about environment education along with formal education. Now, I, I, let me address few issues dealing with value-based education. Value-based education, it will be including, it, it needs to include, it needs to comprise development of humanistic, ethical, constitutional, as well as universal human values of Satya, Dharma, 
शांती अहिंसा सायंटिफिक टेम्पर ऍज वेल ऍज लाईफ स्किल्स व्हॅल्यू बेस्ट एज्युकेशन डेफिनेटली दॅट इज द नीड ऑफ दि अवर इन केस यू ऑब्झर्व एन्शियंट इंडिया number of good examples are there number of best practices you will be observing with ref reference to value based education as well as with reference to environmental education very miserably we are missing that in our independent india and that is why independent india is having its first education policy swatantra bharatacha swatantra स्वतंत्र स्वतःच तंत्र असलेलं अशी ही पहिलीच एज्युकेशन पॉलिसी आहे स्वतंत्र स्वतःच तंत्र असलेलं स्वदेशी रिअली विच इज हॅव्हिंग ए डीप रुटिंग इन अवर इंडियन सॉईल इन अवर इंडियन ट्रेडिशन इन अवर इंडियन कल्चर दॅट इज बेसिकली वी फाइंड अंडर दिस एनईपी ट्वेंटी and because of that humanistic values ethical values constitutional values definitely they are required to be appreciated and they are required to be respected out of our education system which we never got because deliberately macaulay he developed education system 1835 indian education act it was developed in such a manner that independent thinking it would not be developed a connect with the society a connect with the environment a connect with the nature deliberately it was effort was made so as to disconnect that let us bring back all those for the whole well rounded kind of development of the individuals through this nep 2020 global citizenship education in the beginning of the session i made a reference regarding our gurukul system more than 10000 gurukuls it I, i read somewhere that they were at their best in those days whosoever is coming for education in india never went back because other gurukuls also they were having adequate facilities they were having adequate infrastructure so as to accommodate all the learners who desire to seek education that was the robust system of education which we miss very miserably in today's business scenario commercialization of education we observe all the political leaders all those who want to influence the society at some level they are having their own education systems educational institutions and through their educational empire they are trying to influence the society and because of that we are moving far away from the ancient spirit of our indian education let us bring it back with this nep 2020 global citizenship education it will be provided to the to make the learners it has to be provided to make the learners aware about the global issues now nowadays we are connected globally with the help of social media in ancient india there was no social media there was no internet but in spite of that how is it that all those learners all those stalwarts they were completely being familiar regarding whatever is happening around we we were very much expert in spices in marketing of spices to the outside world ship building we were aware we were we were experts in textile we were expert in metalware glassware the entire credit was attributed to the indian education system swadeshi policy of education nowadays efforts are made so that 
students, they would become more peaceful, they would become more tolerant, they would become more inclusive, they would become more secure for the sake of sustainable societies. So this is how, dear friends, there is a need to again look back and on the basis of that, try to appreciate various dimensions of this NEP 2020 and again try to recover the original flavor, the, the uh, original Swadeshi flavor of our Indian education system back. Definitely with that, no one can stop us from becoming Vishwaguru. The global leadership, definitely, no doubt, it would be coming to us. Internship with industry and internship with the research. It would be increasing practical knowledge and it would be increasing employability. Employability as well. Self-employment generation. Employment of self um, uh, generation of self-employment, creation of job for the others. So all such kinds of seeds of all such kinds of ambitions and dreams, they are being bored through this NEP 2020. With our present education system, definitely students, they were the job seekers. Very few amongst them, they were the job creators. Now that kind of spirit of being a job creator, definitely will find through proper application of this NEP 2020. So developing civic sense, respect for others, caring for others, more and more self-centeredness that is being observed. I care only for I care only for my own career. I care only for my own dream, only for my own ambition. At the most, in case I am liberal, I care for my family members. I respect my own family members. What about others? Others, elders in the society? Those I know or those who are strangers to me, what kind of care do I take for them? What kind of respect I, held for, I, I hold for them? So this is what is to be seriously being thought, seriously being considered. And only with that, NEP 2020, a mindful living technique. Mindful living technique. I'm making a reference of that with reference to in the light of NEP 2020. How do we live? How do I make a difference in the lives of the others? Uh, again, uh, roll number 116 has ranged the hand. Something contributed, something is to be said. Let me check the inbox in case some some is the, something is written there. Mr. Namdev, you have raised your hand by mistake or you want to say something? Feel free to express whatever you think about whatever issues I'm putting in front of you. I don't want to make it a one-way communication. I'm trying my best so as to know how you are connected with me and how I'm, re I'm just uh, reaching you. So in case you want to say something, feel free to 
write in the chat box. So with that, I would be in a better position to fulfill your requirement. So in different capacities uh, in my career, I have worked. I, I'm having near about uh, more than 30 years of exp teaching experience. And while I was working as a teacher, so whenever I could get an opportunity, any other opportunity, maybe being a researcher, being a research referee, being a BOS member, being a uh, being a member of RRC, maybe RAC, maybe whenever I was offered the opportunity of being a finance and accounts officer of Swami Ramanand Tirith Parapada University, whenever I was of I, I was nominated as a pro vice chancellor of Swami Ramanand Tirith Parapada University, whenever. Uh, I, I was offered the position of president of uh, inter internal complaints committee. Dear friends, I accepted all such kinds of responsibilities because I wanted to enrich a teacher in me. I wanted an exposure at various levels in different capacities, dealing with different disciplines and different areas of human endeavor. And because of that, whenever I could get an opportunity to be a member of International Student Center, I accepted that responsibility. And I worked as a member of core committee member of International Student Center in my university, Swami Ramanantir Marathwada University for working. Whenever I get an opportunity of working, of just moving anywhere in our country as a NAC assessor, as a NAC peer team member, I take it as an I take it as an opportunity. Uh, okay, some question is there. NEP is absolutely visionary. What do you think as an administrator about human resource, especially when there is no recruitment of teaching uh, and non-teaching posts? Would NEP work on shoulders of CHB? Of course not. Of course not. I understand. Uh, what kind of frustrating kind of situation we are facing at this moment. From number of years, there is no recruitment of teachers, teaching as well as administrative post. They are not being advertised. They are not being filled. And in future also, not the very favorable condition do we observe with reference to employment, salaried employment. Just excuse me for a minute. Hello. Uh, Sorry, Becca. That's what, dear friends, I'm trying to convey to you. Whatever education we sought, was it only for the sake of getting some employment somewhere? Only for the sake of, sake of getting a government job, only for the sake, sake of getting a good, well-paid kind of job, did we seek education? Of course not. Different dimensions are there for the sake of learning objectives. And as I, I was giving you the example of Gurukul, whenever students, they are being taught regarding different aspects of human disciplines, they would not be job seekers at the end of the process. Somewhere, in case they feel like, and again, uh, in NEP 2020, 
there is there are multiple entry and multiple exits a lifelong learning that is encouraged out of this nep 2020 so anywhere when you feel like entering the education system you can enter and anyhow the, the uh, for uh, graduation four year kind of uh, program that is uh, encouraged there now one more question is there let me again tackle this question and then i will be coming to the another question by auratkar sarika ma'am let me finish uh, with previous question that why this frustration is happening because we look towards education only with an intention of getting a good job basically i i i, I am a management teacher so when I look for MBA institutes, they are being treated just like glorified placement agencies. How many placements they are available, what packages, how many recruiters they are coming to that institute, such kind of question they are asked. Whenever you are seeking admission, your only objective is to seek a good job in a good corporate and only with that limited kind of objective, you are seeking admission to that kind of course, that kind of program. Whenever only with a view for seeking a job, you are seeking an admission definitely at the end, in case you are not getting a job, the situation would become frustrating. But when only for the sake of learning, I understand that many imperfections are there Many inadequacies are there in our society, in our education system. But let us again try to improve the situation. Let us try our, give our 100% in the light of NEP 2020. And with that, try to explore what else can be done. When I was giving you the example of uh, Gurukul, and when the students, they were being taught, how to grow the seeds, how to cultivate the crops. A student may not wait for more than five years, six years or seven years. When someone feeds, someone thinks that this fits me, I'm, I'm interested in agriculture, immediately that activity would begin. Someone who is, interest, who is having a flair for marketing, definitely, would be exploring the way of how to market the produce. Someone would be having a financial rationale, would be trying to find out what kind of opportunity is there for me so that I can become a finance manager. So this is how we have to train our students so that at each stage of the that learning process, they would be trying to know themselves what is fit for them and what they can, uh, can go for perfection and kind of excellence where they can go for perfection as well as excellence. And with that, no such kinds of frustration it would be also. I hope uh, I have answered your query. Again, some another question also was there. I will try to find it out and answer that. Holistic education means journey within. Exactly. That's what I, I intended whenever I meant holistic education. Whenever you are a teacher and whenever a student is coming in front of you, one-to-one -one kind of association is required for understanding the value, the worth and the nature of the student. And accordingly, you are required to provide to that kind of need, that kind of nurturing and that kind of grooming to the student. Every student is unique. Every student is different. And everyone's grasping level is different. Everyone's objective is different. Everyone's priority is different. So accordingly, you are required to tackle that.
Okay, some uh, Dr. Vathuri is saying that slides don't change. So let us break, uh, take a break of uh, 10 minutes as normal. That, that's what you, you usually do. Uh, and thereafter, uh, as per your expectation, I'll be giving justice only for the slides which I'm trying to share with you. Is it fine? Okay. Let us meet after 10 minutes. I <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not
Shall we continue now? Okay, I was reading the questions being posed in the chat box. Uh, what we'll do is, I'll be uh, showing you the slides and we'll be keeping a few minutes reserve for the sake of discussion because you have been waiting for slides from Let me again share with you few details. Now in the light of whatever uh, just the reflections I shared with you regarding holistic and multidisciplinary education. Let us relook at a few details, a few definitions of education. Albert Einstein says, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has, uh, what one has learned in school. Very, I, I like this definition very much. Uh, Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. The aim of education is not preparation. The aim of education is the knowledge, not of facts, but of values. Unfortunately, until yet, uh, the education was uh, being considered regarding knowledge sharing only, regarding facts, figure sharing only and value component, it was neglected. And that's why uh, in NEP 2020, care is being taken regarding addition of value education and environment education along with formal education. One of the chief aims of education is to widen the windows through which we glance at the world. So to turn mirrors into windows, that, that indicates that. Mirror gives you self-appraisal. Mirror makes you familiar with yourself. So from being introvert, you are trying to be an extrovert. You are trying to look at several aspects of life which are beyond you which are a part of the society, which, has a, which are a part of the environment, which are a part of the nation, definitely that means education. Education makes you aware about different components, different elements of the society as well as nation. Different aspects of the environment, their interrelatedness, their competence, their uh, dependencies, you become aware only with the help of education. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. Very true. This character building part also, it was not obvious until yet. Now with value education, with Indian knowledge system, now definitely character building also, it would be receiving a focus which is the indication under this NEP 2020.
the ability to read, write and analyze, the confidence to stand up and demand justice and equality, the qualifications and connections to get your foot in the door and take your seat at the table. These are the various aspects of education. Again, think about that. What makes a child gifted and talented may not always be good grades in the school, but a different way of looking at the world and at learning. That's what is expected under this NEP 2020. So basically, the vision of NEP 2020 deals with an India-centric education deeply rooted in the Indian soil, in the Indian culture and tradition that contributes directly to transforming our nation sustainably into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all. What is the meaning of high quality education? In the next slide, it is indicated that quality education must aim to develop individuals who are excellent, now, each term of this quality education definition says a lot about education. Individuals who are excellent, thoughtful, well-rounded, as well as creative. A person to study one or more specialized areas of interest at an in-depth level and develop character ethical and constitutional values, intellectual curiosity, scientific temper, creativity, service spirit, and the life skills of the 21st century. So definitely quality education means that education which aims to develop individuals who are going to be excellent, excellent in whatever they do. That reminds me of Narendra Zadho's me and my father, me and So in that, when Narendra Zadav asked the little, little Narendra, he asked his father about what he would be becoming in future. His father tells him, "Tula kai banai se te ban, pan je karshil, te cha madhe tula tap la zaila pai je. Tu sor bhai cha asil te sor ho, pan." आजूबाजूचे लोक असं म्हणले पाहिजे की अशा पंचक्रोशी मध्ये असं चोर आम्ही बघितलं नाही सो दॅट इज एक्सलन्स व्हॉट एव्हर यू आर परस्युईंग ट्राय टू परस्यू एक्सलन्स इन दॅट सो दॅट काइंड ऑफ एक्सलन्स शुड बी सॉट बाय एव्हरी लर्नर थॉटफुल केपेबिलिटी ऑफ इंडिपेंडंट थिंकिंग दॅट हॅज टू बी नर्चर अँड दॅट हॅज टू बी ग्रूम बाय एज्युकेशन well-rounded and creative individuals, they should be developed. They should study any area in depth at the same time. They should not be apart from the other areas of knowledge. Although in some, as per their interest, some area they would be exploring at depth, but definitely the other areas of knowledge also they would be very much familiar with. And what is important is development of character, ethical as well as constitutional values, intellectual curiosity, scientific temperament, creativity, service spirit. So as a teacher, definitely every one of us at every opportunity for every learner, we should see to it that all these definitions, all these terms of this quality education, they should be present in whatever activities we pursue. We impart education not only through formal lectures, we develop different pedagogies so as to impart the knowledge, attitudinal changes and skill development kind of activities to, with the students. So while doing that, we should see that Along with lectures, some case studies, role plays, group discussions, management exercises, in-basket exercises, all such kinds of methodologies also, they should be adopted 
so as to groom the students and through all such kinds of activities internships various opportunities of real life exposure to the outside world that kind of interaction with different professional different experts that has to be provided and then only we can say that this is quality education so as already i mentioned nep 2020 is based on the fundamental pillars of access equity quality affordability as well as accountability so the purpose of education is to develop good human beings capable of rational thought and action along with rational thought and action they should possess compassion empathy courage resilience scientific temper and creative imagination with sound ethical moorings and values this is very much essential whenever students they are not getting jobs they are not getting required grades in their examinations number of cases are there of suicides number of cases are there of harming others number of cases are there of regarding unethical and not so kind of moral kind of practices uh, of the students at a very early and very young age so when we are thinking about in what manner i should educate my students definitely with that we should see to it that compassion empathy courage resilience creative imagination scientific temper all such kinds of quality they should be imbibed in the personality of the students number of opportunities they should be given to them so that they should be able to know about their leadership ability number of opportunities they should be given to them so that on their own they should explore different areas of knowledge on their own they should be involved in various kinds of practical activities the aim of education is to provide engaged productive and contributing citizens for building an equitable society as envisaged by our constitution so definitely uh, whenever we are talking about holistic and multidisciplinary kind of education all such kinds of terms all such kinds of attributes they should be uh, very seriously being attended by us the teachers now again in brief i would be taking a review regarding principal guidelines of nep 2020 flexibility a wide range of programs and subjects they are available in terms of academic non academic as well as vocational areas now there is as i said in initially you have, we have to ensure integrity as well as unity of knowledge there is no separation between arts and science there is no separation between vocational kind of activities and academic kind of activities so complete education objective and education aim it should be in our mind and accordingly we should see to it that we are delivering that kind of activity we are providing that kind of initiative for the sake of uh, all round development of the student total equity and inclusion a respect for diversity and respect for local context in curriculum pedagogy as well as policy now students they are having differences diversity with reference to language with reference to community with reference to culture with reference to race religion color so uh, by considering all that the teaching learning process should be addressed in such a manner that such kind of drivers needs they should be addressed by the teachers there is a need to emphasize conceptual understanding that is the need of the hour in addition to that creative ability of the students lateral thinking of the students positive thinking of the students the teacher has to be very much vigilant regarding uh 
exploration of such kinds of capabilities also. Humans' values, constitutional values, life skills. So they should be developed consequently whenever you are interacting with the students. Various experiential learning methods, they should be used and every effort should be made by the teachers so that students, they, they would become aware about the connect to the society, connect to the environment as well as connect to the nature. Promotion of multilingualism. So that kind of care also has been taken by NEP 2020, mother, mother language, mother tongue. Uh, regional language, local language, all such kinds of uh, uh, languages, uh, they should be explored. That is the indication of the NEP 2020 guideline. Indian knowledge system, which was miserably missing uh, in our education system now, uh, increased emphasis is expected of Indian knowledge system as well as value education uh, through our books, through our teaching learning process, uh, again, various kinds of means as well as methods. And NEP 2020 recognizes that teacher, they are at the heart of the learning process. So accordingly, recruitment of now, now basically, what kind of respect the Acharyas and the teacher they used to receive in the ancient India that is missing nowadays. So as to have that kind of respect on the lines of IPS and IAS, net set also was introduced basically so, so that teacher, they should be receiving that kind of respect in the society. So as to have, have, have that kind of respect in the society, uh, recruitment of the teachers, com the compensation packages of the teachers, training and well as retraining requirements of the teachers, very carefully they have been addressed by the government and accordingly every opportunity uh, for self-appraisal, self-updation for the teachers that has to be respected, that kind of care has been taken in the NEP 2020 guidelines. Good governance, empowerment of the teachers, encouraging their creative and innovative identities with reference to autonomy, ensuring integrity as well as transparency and tight but light regulatory system Again, these are the basic guidelines of the NEP 2020. Regular formative assessment for learning. That is again being uh, offered by NEP 2020. Instead of just having an examination at the end, which would be only based on memory, instead of that, some kind of formative kind of assessment, it is supposed to be indicated out of this learning process out of this uh, education system. Along with that, few again, few dimensions of NEP 2020, they are in favor of outstanding research, continuous policy making. It is in the process, it's evolving. Whenever after a gap of near about 200 years, again, you want to revisit your own culture, your own tradition, your own values, Definitely, some time is required for that. Many challenges they have to be faced. Many inconveniences, again, they would be there. In spite of that, uh, if required, some kind of changes in the policy, they would be encouraged. Foreign universities, they are allowed to set campuses in our country at the same time. Uh, institutions in our country, they are they are allowed to put to, to set up their campuses abroad. That kind of provision is made in the NEP 2020. Use of modern technology, constitution, uh, formation of National Education Technological Forum, developing some technology-based kind of options for adult learning, uh, development of e-courses in regional languages. Again, these are again few further features of NEP 2020, which talk about holistic as well as multidisciplinary education. 
under NEP 2020, uh, Higher Education Commission in India is recommended, which would be taking care of National Higher Education Regulatory Council, National Accreditation Council, Higher Education Grants Council, as well as General Education Council, which would be dealing with National Higher Education Quality Framework. Holistic education this is the way to lead the country to 21st century with an aim to have both individual and national development. The beauty of holistic education is it, 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 it is for individual development. At the same time, individual development would be made in such a manner that ultimately it would be contributing for national development. The philosophy, this philosophy is based on the assumption that each learner finds identity, meaning and purpose in life through their local connections with the community, with the natural world, as well as humanitarian values like compassion as well as peace. Now, this is beautiful. This definition of holistic education, it's, it's very much significant in understanding the real beauty of holistic education. Education should understand that each learner is unique. Needs of each learner, they are unique. They are different from the others. Each one's background is different. Each one's priority is different. Each one's interest is different. But whenever on a common platform, through a common platform, you are imparting education, then each learner should be able to appreciate what is the meaning of education, what is the purpose of education in life. By the way, being a management teacher, always I believe that there is comparison between sailing and education. You can never sell unless someone is ready to buy. Same case is with education. You are very much resourceful. You want to say many things. You want to teach many things. But unless and until the learner is ready, there is a desirable, there is a desire in the learner. Your task is incomplete. You may not be successful. So from that angle, Developing that kind of ignition, developing the learning desire, that is very much important. So each learner has to be convinced about the meaning of education and purpose of education in life through own example as well as through your walk and talk through whatever case studies you are using, through whatever methodologies you are applying, through various examples which you are giving. And then only the students, they would develop a connect with you. It is very much essential other than only sharing the knowledge, other than only enhancing the skills, developing the skills of the students, other than making the behavioral changes, other than making the attitudinal kind of changes. It is very much essential for a teacher to make realize the students, their local connections with the community, how, how they relate to the outside world, how they relate to the outside community, in what manner they can contribute for various issues of social concern of various issues of psychological concern. And then with that, we can say that the education is holistic. What is the purpose of holistic education? To develop highly capable, socially acceptable, skilled enterprising, enterprising youth who would assume leadership. Each and every student should be given many opportunities for appraising their own leadership ability. An urge to exercise leadership, an urge to assume leadership, that has to be inculcated through the students, through the teaching learning process. 
they should be highly capable at the same time they should be socially acceptable they should be having some kind of tolerance towards the views opinions of the others they should be able to provide respect to the other languages to the other cultures to the other religions to the other caste and so and with that various national local regional as well as global challenges they would be able to meet as and when they see that some inconvenience is there on their own they should take the initiative to do something for the betterment that is the basically the one of the aims of holistic education education seeks to address physical emotional social ethical cultural as well as academic need of the students in an integrated manner with a motive of every student succeeds every student is having a potential now normally what we do is on the basis of your marking system we divide the students into average students below average students above average students and when we say below average we lose interest in them below average kya sense banta hai unme invest karne mein why to spend your energy and your attention and your time on all those who may not be able to get the passing percentage who may not be able to pa pass out with flying colors in the examination so this is not the assumption with which every student every student student is to be treated every teacher should strongly believe in the motive of every student succeeds capabilities of everyone they are different strengths of everyone they are different capabilities of everyone competencies of everyone they are different so every student deserves attention investment of time as well as energy may be able to do something great in the future may be able to do something very very meaningful in the life so with that orientation a teacher has to pay attention for the all round development of the students again few more views regarding holistic education we observe like holistic education looks not only after livelihood it looks at the life also and it understand that livelihood is only a part of life it is not whole of it so acquisition of life skills which are necessary for life which are lifelong development that is the basic purpose of holistic education holistic education it develop the capacities which promote student wellness students wellness such as fitness good health psychosocial well being as well as sound ethical grounding so all these aspects fitness good health psychosocial well being and sound ethical grounding they are attended through holistic education whenever you are paying attention to all such aspects then only you uh, can just be confirmed that i am dealing with holistic education as such multidisciplinary education let us see different dimensions of multidisciplinary education multidisciplinary education has a focus on skill education as well as employability improving your employability that is again a dimension along with skill education skill education makes you eligible for self employment it makes you eligible for being a job creator a job giver flexible curricular structure that is the beauty of nep 2020 already i i shared with you many dimensions of this flexibility feature so 
flexibility indicates you are having a good assortment to choose as far as courses of con courses are concerned as far as programs are concerned as far as different methodologies are concerned as far as different opportunities of exposure to the environment and to the society are concerned so there are various levels of choice based education we have choice cbcs choice based credit system in which number of menus they are offered to you number of choices they are offered to you and you are free to choose as per your interest as per your uh, aptitude within the department across the deanery dual degree across the institution universities uh, through credit transfer number of opportunities they are available for you academic bank of credits abc that is again a very beautiful kind of uh, aspect of nep 2020 lifelong lifelong learning that is the motto of education nowadays as per nep 2020 at some point in time in case you were not able to complete your graduation and after that in case you want to again continue there was no option being available and when you have completed only one semester two semesters or only one year or two years so your status is nothing you had done but now with multiple entry and multiple exits really real life real lifelong learning facility that is provided uh, to the learners so with that in case a four year multidisciplinary undergraduate program uh, that is available for the learners with various exit options this multidisciplinary undergraduate program may be for three years or maybe for four years, the choice of the learner. It may be three-year program in which case, yeah, in case you want to pursue master's program, then uh, you had to deal with two-year master's program. Or otherwise, in case you have completed four-year multidisciplinary undergraduate program, in which four, fourth year exclusively it was for research, then after completing four-year multidisciplinary undergraduate program for master's, only one year is required. So overall, in uh, integrated, progr integrated programs also, they are available under NEP 2020. So at a stretch, on the basis of your choice of the subjects, choice of the courses in case you want to continue with your undergrad as well as pg program your master's degree definitely you are eligible to do that you are empowered to do that and in the meanwhile in case because of one reason or the other you want to take an exit that option is available to you you have sought admission in the first year of your graduation and you want to stop for the time being, you will be getting a certificate to that effect. With that certificate, any time after any uh, time duration, you can again rejoin the second year of your graduation later on. Whatever number of credits you are required to secure in the first year, you secure that and thereafter you can get an exit. The number of credits you can seek either from your own institute or maybe from any accredited institute by the government which is in your country or maybe which is abroad. So that kind of facility also is available under this ABC, Academic Bank of Credits. Say for this year you are free, you, are, you require only 20 credits but you, you, you wish to get 30 credits say. You can get additional credits, additional extra credits. You can store digitally those credits under this ABC facility. This year, as per your 20 credit requirement, you get your certificate course. 
uh, certificate being uh, just uh, received and remaining 10 credits you can store in your digital depository, in your digital locker. Maybe after four years, again, you want to join your second year. At that time, 10 credits already you have uh, stored in your bank digital locker. Now only 10 credits they are to be sought. Thereafter, at the end of the second year, after securing adequate number of credits as per the core structure, as per the program structure, uh, in case you are completing that, you will be getting a certificate. Uh, you will be getting a diploma uh, in that discipline. At the end of the third year, you will be getting a degree. After successfully uh, securing the required number of credits, uh, you will be getting an honors degree. Even after that, you want to continue with your research orientation, you will be getting a research degree uh, in that uh, chosen area of graduate program. So this is how this beautiful facility that is being made available under the Academic Bank of Credit. Now, you, you need not be content with whatever courses they are available in your institute. In other reputed institute, in case some other interesting programs of your interest, they are available. Definitely, you can seek those many credits and accordingly, you can use those credits as per your need and as per your priority. So this is how multidisciplinary education is having number of facilities. Meru, multidisciplinary education and research universities. Uh, that, that is again being contemplated by this NEP 2020. So nowadays there are some organizations which offer only single stream or more than one stream. In due course of time, all such kinds of organizations which offer only individual streams, they would be phased out. They would be required to add several other disciplines also within their scope. And accordingly, it would be seen that all the educational institutes, they are having a multidisciplinary kind of dimension as far as different programs and different courses available for the students they are concerned. So multidisciplinary institute of the hour. So in this manner, we have seen holistic and multidisciplinary education. It comprises of formal education as we have been studied over the years until yet. Along with that, equal focus is given for environment education as well value-based education. So again, let us just revise few dimensions of holistic and multidisciplinary education. Holistic and multidisciplinary education should strive in an integrated way to improve all human capacities, mental, cultural, social, physical, emotional, as well as moral in a comprehensive way. Absorbing holistic and multidisciplinary education means absorbing knowledge of several arts, which are popularly known as generous arts or liberal arts in the course. Optimal learning environment and support for the students offering holistic approach. It includes adequate curriculum, interactive kind of pedagogy, consistent formative kind of assessment, as well as adequate support to the students. It is not only about curriculum. It is not only about the placement. It is not only about the percentage. It is not only about the placements. It is about curriculum as well as it is about a typically diverse and very innovative kind of pedagogy, teaching, learning, pedagogy and methodology, as well as assessment system also that is formative and it is having a consistent nature. It is not only based on memory. It is not only concerned with only knowledge testing and it provides required support to the student as and when it is needed. Student to student requirements, they vary. So, 
each requirement would be considered whenever assessment is designed, whenever curriculum is developed and whenever pedagogy that is being planned. And whenever it is done, then only it is said that it is holistic and multidisciplinary. So, under holistic and multidisciplinary education, there is emphasis on theoretical understanding through pedagogy that highlight on communication, discussion, debate, research, cross-disciplinary as well as interdisciplinary thinking. Communication from all possible levels. It is not one-way communication. It is two-way communication. It is one-to-one. -one, it is one-to-many. It is many-to-one. All dimensions of formal education, informal education, horizontal, vertical, all such kinds of dimensions, they are respected under this education. There is a scope for discussion. Compulsorily, there is a provision for discussion. There is only not, not only dictation of the views of the teachers. Instead, there is a provision of discussion. There is a provision of including different views and different opinions of different stakeholders. There is a requirement of debate also as and when it is the need. Research also definitely, research also is pursued. Everyone is required to do little research also so as to testify the conceptions, so as to find out the applications, so as to find out the solutions for the problem. And all this is along cross-disciplinary as well as interdisciplinary kind of thinking. So education content focus is on concepts, it is on ideas, it is on applications as well, it is on problem solving angles also. So holistic and multidisciplinary education, it is about intellectual development, social development, physical development, emotional development, moral development, psychological development as well as spiritual development. All the dimensions of the personality, all the aspects of the personality, they are completely being addressed by this education. So, in the light of core life skills, which have been laid down by World Health Organization, again, Oh, we can once again revise, we can once again relook that the which the core life skills which have been identified by WHO, definitely each of the life skills is being addressed properly, is being attended to in an effective kind of manner by this education as per NEP 2020. Which are these, as mentioned in this slide, self-awareness, in absence of self-awareness, how students, they would be picking up various programs, various courses of the study. Self-awareness, self-appraisal, that is a must. So, number of opportunities they should be provided to the students for the sake of self-awareness also. Empathy, critical thinking, creative thinking, decision-making ability. Definitely, decision-making ability has to be given proper attention. Number of chances they should be given, the students show that they should be able to check their decision-making skill. In case it is missing, they should be given the proper training so as to improve their decision-making ability. Same is the case of critical thinking as well as creative thinking. They are learning a subject. They are learning a cross. They are, they are learning it for the sake of getting a degree in a particular kind of program. But while dealing with that, all such kinds of life skills, definitely they should be explored and they should be enhanced. Problem solving. Whenever one faces a problem, the common tendency is to go to the elders, to go to the seniors for finding out the solutions. 
but education has to be imparted in such a manner that on their own everyone should be capable and competent to find out the solution effective communication as i said formal informal verbal oral written all such kinds of communication skills they should be enriched out of this teaching learning process the entire education it should revolve around not only development of the communication skills but interpersonal relationships also they should be enriched teachers they should give number of opportunity of the students so that they should learn how to be a team leader how to be a team player how to get along with the others how to conduct the meetings how to convince the others regarding a particular kind of idea how to impress upon the others so all such kinds of interpersonal skills definitely a student has to acquire in the process itself there there should not be any need for again uh, joining a class regarding personality development joining a class for development of soft skills whenever you are a student in your institute definitely all such kinds of skills all such kinds of capabilities they should be automatically deliberately in a planned manner they should be developed stress coping definitely it is very much important emotion management stress management these issues very skillfully very meaningful manner in a very careful manner this issue they should be tackled by the teachers so with this i finish my presentation now this session is open for your queries for your uh, contribution to the topic for your own ideas which have not been addressed until yet by me no again uh, before now there are new questions from your side let me again add to the questions which you ask you before we took the break there was a question regarding uh, less uh, app job opportunities uh, for the uh, teachers and for the administrative post also so why to look for getting an employment in a government institute or maybe in a private institute instead of that why don't you think of starting your own institute why is it that you want to be a teacher why is it that you don't want to be a leader why is it that you don't want to be a social reformer why is it that you don't want to be a social worker so this is how development of different facets of the personality of the student that is at one level at the other level develop thinking about our own personality thinking about our own qualifications our own attributes our own competencies our own capability so that is again that should receive a pro pri proper priority that should receive a proper attention a proper justification for that and from that angle definitely we will not be so someone talk talked about someone ask about administrative load of the teachers how to reduce it i i am extremely i am uh, i don't like the term like load we we when we talk about the uh, which subjects we which courses we tackle we use the term workload distribution workload distribution why load it is your choice to join this teaching profession it is area of your interest why is it that you are taking it as a load negative connotation that is being attached with the term isn't it so from that angle it is a need is to look at the situation with a positive angle with a positive outlook 
and then things they would become much simpler and your life would be more happier and more meaningful that's what i believe in because i i understand uh, just living for number of years only on chb basis with no further assurance it's not a very easy kind of thing i understand that i i, I sailed in the same boat at <laughs> long back it took me number of years so so as to secure my job but anyhow even in those days i never lost my focus i was aware whenever uh, i was uh, having a temporary job and every day i i used to, i was waiting for the termination to termination later and just complete just to finish my services even in in such kind of situation also uh, i worked till 5:30 till end of the day because i i thought that way that this this might be the last opportunity for me to have an interaction with the teachers students and the teachers and from tomorrow i may not be having the opportunity to teach to learn to in, indulge in teaching learning kind of practices and with that orientation i used to give my best i used to be very much keep motivated keep motivated uh, myself and because of that i i think that i have the right to tell you also to work on similar lines to develop that kind of approach of being extremely positive optimistic about the situation when i entered swami ramanand tirth marathwada university and when in the reception counter i read the quote the destiny <laughs> opportunity distribution i like it <laughs> nice approach dr rahul <laughs> when i i i read the quotation the destiny of india is now being shaped in our classrooms i was thrilled i was amazed still i remember how thrilled i was to read that so i i thought that this is a very good opportunity for me a very onerous kind of responsibility and i should give justice to that i never forgot that throughout my career i never forgot that i am contributing for national development maybe squirrel share maybe a very my meager role i was having but anyhow it was there so always i remembered that never i forgot my focus and i am very much happy that i could give my best i could give my 100% to whatever i did until yet so i like it opportunity distribution instead of workload distribution <laughs> or let it be only work distribution why load <laughs> negative term no as per my plan for today whatever i wished well, just to plan to convey to you i did it now i kept the i just uh, uh, kept this time free for the sake of your contribution and discussion
ओके आई एक्सेप्ट पार्टिसिपेंट्स कैन रेज द हैंड्स एंड मैम कैन अनम्यूट देम पार्टिसिपेंट्स कैन रेज द हैंड्स दो वॉन्ट टू आज द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम रिएक्शन दे कैन रेज द हैंड्स एंड मैम कैन अनम्यूट देम and ganesh sir you can propose the vote of thanks after this uh, lecture is over ganesh kulkarni any questions from the participants ganesh you are there okay rushikesh has asked any views on disparity in school colleges fee structure so at this moment some disparity is there but uh, let us hope in due course of time it would be removed uh there is shikshan shulk samiti uh, which is interested with uh, deciding the fees uh, to be charged for each institute so with uh, nep 2020 now it would be requiring maybe 10 years or more than that for complete uh, implementation of its uh, different uh, uh, kind of uh, features as well as guidelines it it, uh, it 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 may not be done completed in a single year or maybe two years or five years as such so in due course of time definitely such kind of disparity it would be removed whatever facilities they are available uh whatever amenities they are just offering on that basis definitely the fees would be charged and definitely on the basis of uh, need of the student and background of the student definitely the student would be able to seek whatever he or she desires so that's what we hope at this moment again roll number 73 has said that uh load means the quant quantity that can be carried at one time by specified means so he is saying that it is technical he or she oh, I, i don't know uh, but the student is saying that technical the teacher is saying that technical meaning no negation i accept that <laughs> uh, okay so even though we use the term uh, load we don't associate it don't associate it in a negative way technically we take it uh, uh, we interpret the means i accept that any more questions So if no questions are there, uh, we can uh, go for a vote of thanks. Uh, as always, uh, uh, the lecture is enjoyed by each and every participant, ma'am. Last time also the feedback of your lecture was really nice, and I hope that this time also around participants have lively enjoyed all the contents given by you. So we are really thankful to you on behalf of UGC Malviya Mission Teachers Training Center, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University, ma'am. Thanks a lot, ma'am, for delivering your uh, valuable time. Hmm? Thank you. okay welcome so uh, now declare this meeting is end uh, before ending the meeting all participants put their roll numbers in the chat box for the attendance